So the other thing I, I thought of in all this is uh, the what's called the petrodollar. And the, the petrodollar connects in with oil, and, and it, it's a system by which um, the oil sales are made in dollars. And um, it becomes kind of a, a trade-off of, of playing ball with, with, with the U.S. And the, and the West. It's like, like with Saudi Arabia, especially, you see that the U.S. having this very cozy relationship. And as long as the, the Saudis and OPEC sell their oil in dollars, then, then they get essentially like a protection racket. I mean, yeah. they, they, they get to use the U.S. military sometimes, and especially the, the arms. They get to, to make use of those and buy those and, yeah, and do very, become very powerful that way. Yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a strange situation. It's almost as if that we've you've mercenaried the, the United States military because as opposed to the above-board or organizations other like NATO, which are these uh, defense compacts, the agreement that we have with the Saudis, it's it's not only for defense. They they've they've called us in for offensive operations too. So it's this very very strange situation. Yeah, and and the Saudis become rich off of it. You, right. You, and in the Middle East in general, you have these these families and these you know, oligarchs, what we should call them, who get just hugely rich in in dollars and so then they can spend money all, all over the place this was just one random e- example i found is that the the chrysler building is 90 percent owned by uh, people in uh, you know oligarchs in abu dhabi wow <laughs> that's very very it's all bloody money too bloody bloody money it's a whole big you know money system well some of the there's been some interesting foreign uh fair stuff going on with the petrodollar too recently too um, hasn't hasn't Joe Biden kind of not been? It's kind of hilarious because I, I I do think that that Biden through all this stuff with Ukraine and Russia and the Russian oil and is is wrecking the petrodollar. Yeah, it seems like it. <laughs> it's like yeah, okay, if you want to wreck the petrodollar, I mean, you got Putin demanding the, that oil now will be bought in rubles. Yeah, and uh, I don't know. I I don't I think it's. <laughs> It's kind of amazing that they can be so in- incompetent that they can wreck something that's so powerful. In it's their strange. Interest. And yeah, I mean, th- th- that is one thing with 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 elites is is there there's this assumption that that they're really smart and that they're really that they know what they're doing. And there's there's example after example that that these elites really really aren't. <laughs> they're they're not that smart. They're connected. They, they have resources, they have family connections, but this idea that, you know, that, that they're all brainiacs and, and they plan everything out and it's all, it's really not the case. And, and you know, examples like the Iraq war, I mean, it's, it's a total fiasco. Yeah, definitely. And that's, that's part of the reason why it's such a big deal that we need to get uh, reform of the law and reform of the money system because yeah we're all we're all humans they're they're no different than us the difference that they have is this a massive amount of money and capital and wealth and so what happens is because with the money system and the legal system being so intertwined they almost don't care to, to cover up their tracks and yeah a lot of the stuff can be really transparent that they do because they have these armies of, of lawyers that that they have to insulate them from from power and the other thing i, I think to remember about about the the corporate economic elites is is that they're they're totally cutthroat. Yes, they, there's there's not they're, they're not a monolith. They they don't they they don't work in lockstep. They they have common interests, and so there is this this set of interests um, among that top point one percent that's very different from the interests of the ninety nine percent. But there's and that's always important to remember, and that's you know, that's why we get the laws we do. You know, it's how they bought Congress and why Congress does what it does and what it doesn't do. But I think it's also important to remember that they they'll cut each other down. I mean, they'll they'll even they'll even screw over themselves for like a better quarter. <laughs> it's they're, 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 it's very much a Game of Thrones situation. Yeah. And so if, if you could potentially find the situation to, to pin them against each other, you know, that could be advantageous to the rest of the public. But And it happens. Yeah. You'll see like Silicon Valley will be opposed to what the, uh, the energy sector is doing and they'll and they'll they'll tussle and social media. You know, you'll see a tussle between that and and other interests. You have Hollywood, and they, they're not they're not always completely in alignment. And in theory, if if we 
of the 99% can be working collaboratively for our common interests and and poke at things that divide them up. I, I, I do think there are like real opportunities there. We can kind of kind of figure out those those fissures, those those things to to kind of crack open the, the power structure. I, I think it's possible. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I think that that using their their greed against mm. each other is definitely part of a multi-pronged takeover that can happen. 